so good afternoon everyone and welcome to the session on uh, what are the different challenges around labor law in the current scenario of the lockdown and i believe uh, a lot of challenges are around the labor law stream and i have my friend like dear friend with me today uh, nitish who is a practicing advocate is nitish are you nitish there so to begin with uh, due to this lockdown a lot of things have changed uh, in this scenario where uh, i mean uh, this new culture of uh, work from home and uh, has developed like all together and some of the organizations had uh, yeah so uh, i mean there there are a lot of things that are happening like current situation uh like work from home is one good example and uh, today in this session like uh, i have a lot of questions in mind which i'll be putting forward to nitish who is a practicing advocate and has been dealing with a lot of labor law cases and uh, right uh, so work from home is one then there are law, uh, layoff conditions and there's rip retrenchment and there's uh sexual harassment issues that are to be dealt with and a lot more things that uh, i want to discuss in this session today so uh let me just introduce uh everyone uh with nitish yes hi am i you yeah so now you are clearly visible and mm -hmm. let me just introduce nitish to everyone uh, nitish is my uh best friend from college and uh, he has been uh, one of those who has uh, i mean accelerated his practice like anything he started off like uh, from uh, rajasthan high court at jodhpur and now he is having his own independent practice in jaipur he uh, had he has been a panel lawyer to a lot of government organizations uh, as well as uh, his representative the rajasthan state at supreme court also as well as uh, he is somebody who has more than 3000 cases on label law for a media company and for obvious reasons i can name that media company uh here but uh, i would just want uh, nitin nitish to uh, start with a short introduction about the session today and then we can go ahead with it right so nitish uh, can you please like uh, let's know you what and as so you as first say. of all i was asked with such a introduction Uh, you cannot expect uh, such good words from your best friends you always talk a language of sarcasm between friends but nonetheless thank you so much for such a great introduction see in this session we'll be talking about more of uh, how the labor laws uh, is the, will be dealt in the current covid situations and what are the basics of the labor laws which need to be uh, looked into in the current aspects and how these laws have evolved over the period of time so basically labor law is a social welfare legislation which had its beginning from the constitution labor laws are of three, three types one is that labor law which is enacted by the uh, central governments and it is enforced by the central governments only second is which is in, uh, enacted by the central government but enforced by both central government as well as state governments that includes the major part of labor legislations which includes industrial disputes act sexual harassment at workplace act 2013 payment of wages act uh, and other uh, there are other 13 more legislations into that list and lastly the the legislations are which are enacted by the central government uh, which are enacted by the central government and enforced by the state government these are basically the uh, laws which are related to daily working as well as holidays and remunerations of laborers and th there are in total around 51 legislations pertaining to the laborers and industrial disputes across uh, across india in 2009 there i have been a proposal of scrapping these all 51 44 to 51 laws and introducing four main legislations which are code of uh, wages code of industrial relations code of uh, social uh, benefits and code of uh, uh, safety hazards but these are still uh, yet to come into picture so as on today when we speak uh, there are those 44 to 51 legislations are already in place 
and are applicable across the country so we'll be discussing how many we can discuss depends on what are the questions across from the viewers and what are your questions so uh, i give you a basic uh, um, uh, overview right. of the labor laws in india right uh, so the question and answer part from the viewers angle we'll take it at the end uh, of the session huh. and uh, for the beginning uh, let's just start with layoff uh, i mean uh, what's the situation in the current scenario for layoffs that are taking place like uh, i mean uh, how i put that question across is that uh, recently i was talking to a friend and he told me that there is a notification out uh, in the southern states of india like kerala and telangana andhra pradesh there is a notification that people cannot uh, lay off people as of now the organizations they cannot lay off people as of now and whatever is happening they those will be the paid leaves that the employees would be getting so uh, yes. what is the scenario there how much of uh, that uh, notification is actually i mean uh, could be uh, like say uh, practiced in the current scenario and all those things so uh, to begin with like layoffs the uh, the point is that uh, in relation to layoffs the notification uh, the central government has only issued advisory from time to time in last right, advice yes yes advisory is a general directions in nature it is not something which which is a compulsory adherence to yes most of the companies do follow the advisory of the government but look uh, depending on the circumstances of each and every industry uh, it can be it can be molded into uh, the best industry standards first of all uh, the state governments are the agencies which will issue guidelines or which will issue directives regarding layoff layoff has to be understood uh, in a very wider term normally what we understand from layoff is that there is a mass reduction of uh, the laborers or the workers from the industry however layoff is normally of two types it is first that uh, layoff certainly cuz sometimes it is of definite period so uh, the industry is supposedly facing crisis so they can ask their laborers to not work or they do not require that workforce for another say two months or three months that is a temporary layoff but yes when uh, laborers are uh, laborers or workers or workmen are removed in large that that is a layoff practice the government so far as uh, as far as i know they have only issued certain directives or advisories those are not compulsory in nature but yes looking to the humanitarian forces and you know the situation in current times people are adhering to those advisories but you have to understand that you need not necessarily be uh, uh, if you supposedly there are 10 workers who are a dead wood in your organization and aren't giving a productivity either in the either with the times when your industry was full fledgedly working then you certainly have the right to you know uh, terminate their services as per the employment contract or do a layoff a layoff so in that practical sense uh, layoff has to be construed as a very wider term all uh, i have seen many of my clients also giving me queries that you know that are certain uh, directions or orders by the government you have to see that those are not the orders those are the advisories yes as far as possible if you can accommodate you should accommodate and you should take care of your laborers you know if you care for your people the people the, the people will care for your industry in that logic but supposedly if you are really really facing crisis and keeping those extra workmen would result in closing of an industry there is certainly no point of keeping it at the first and foremost target of any business uh, entity or a or a or a industry is to protect its uh, its uh, its uh, its its business so basically it has to be uh, construed in that sense it is not necessary that you know that if you if you have already planned supposedly for two months in january or uh, december you have planned that post the financial year is closed you will be removing say 100 people from your industry as there are introduction of some new machines or you are not producing a particular product that has become obsolete in the market you can still go ahead with that right so what happens to all these startups nitish like uh, there there are startups around right 
and uh, because of the lockdown they are not getting business so they don't have money to pay to all these employees and all those people so how do they go about all of this right i mean they don't have a choice altogether but to lay off these people because they are not able to give them salaries correct so these are tough times we have to admit that these are tough times you as as i answered in my layoff question these are only the advisories if there if an industry is threatened with a position that the whole uh, in the whole unit or whole business house will get scrapped following the advisory of the government you cannot follow that you have to you know go ahead with the best industry standards or best industry practice if the industry practice says that you know in the times when a proper technique or a proper uh, product becomes obsolete you need to lay off certain people from your industry in order to keep the sanctity of that uh, you know of industry you can go ahead with that right okay. because see startups uh, startups are basically funded or uh, funded business houses so in order to they are also the startup are funded right Yes, correct. So all the 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 management of the startups are also answerable to their investors, and the answer to the investors is only to show what is the productivity and what is the profit margin. So in order to sustain an industry, you have to take a hard step. Unfortunately, yes, these are hard times. Everybody is suffering the wrath of the time, but that is that is only the way out. We you cannot you know you cannot. um take the uh, you cannot take the blame on the industry itself yes had it been a good time people would have been employed people would have been still working in that industry but now still you know the, the, the since the industries are locked down we do not know when the lockdown will open in that uh, scenario the uh, the rules or the business houses internal working practices should be followed right so uh, uh, again uh, that uh, like there is an array of opportunity also there for uh, especially for the uh, advocates practicing in the labor law field uh, can there be a recourse action where all these employees who have been laid off because of such a situation can they claim some sort of compensation from the startups or let's say these industries who are laying them off see every uh, every bad time to create good opportunities i very firmly believe that every bad every bad times create some very good opportunities in maybe in different sectors but it uh, definitely creates good opportunities so exactly like you said uh, as a as a labor practitioner uh, people can see a boom in practice in next say 6 months uh, normally what happens is that the recourse of industrial uh, of the of the labor laws goes to the labor courts so i sincerely believe that in another 3 months there'll be a huge rise in labor cases because the persons who have been laid off retrenched or you know terminated from their services will be filing a labor disputes to at least gain gain some financial benefits out of that litigation so i see that you know um, i see that lot of litigation will be brought into the uh, into the market in another uh, say 6 months or 8 months right because, that that would be from both the sides i believe from the employer yes, side yes, as yes, well yes. as from the employee yes. side right see the industrial id industrial dispute act is the provisions which is applicable most of the provisions or majority of the provisions are applicable to both uh, labors as well as the industry so supposedly you are acting uh, acting on uh, acting on say uh, a proper procedure prescribed under the law to remove certain people from the industry from the from your organization even you have to go, sometimes go to the labor commissioners and prove your uh, prove your uh, method that what you have adopted is within the four corners of law and uh, the uh, the all fairness uh, our principles of natural justice have been adhered to so i see that in next 6 uh, months there will be a rise in labor litigation uh, from both the sides industry as well as workmen and so that there is a great opportunity there then for a lot yes, of people yes, yes. who can actually make use of this time and learn these labor laws and uh, what is the actual kind of work uh, that's something we do in our courses yeah, at law school also what oh, i'm sorry to interrupt you that uh, but uh, uh, the point is that labor law is also vast suppose the termination has to be challenged some industries due to financial 
uh, measures will not deposit gratuity of the labors so that labors uh, will go to contest about their gratuity issues their wages might not be paid sometimes it happens is that uh, industry is not closed or a person is not removed from the industry but they are not being paid for 3 to 4 months so those three uh, those uh, people will be going under the payment of wages act to obtain their uh, back wages which they have not received and there are provisions that which says that uh, provisions as well as judgments which says that a uh, penalty of up to 10 times can be uh, levied upon the industry for not paying the wages so looking to that aspect and looking to the current uh, current scenario i very sincerely believe that you know there will be a at least 40% more litigation then it usually happens in the labor courts in the uh, given lockdown situation right and how much is the system prepared for all of this see very frankly speaking system is never prepared so the system <laughs> is always under prepared if the system is prepared um, properly then there is no point of litigation ever there will be never litigation uh, never litigation will never happen so system is always under prepared infrastructures of labor courts are very poor uh the um, uh, the labor commissioners the conciliation officers are always less so as i said that bad times go bring some very good opportunities so the system is uh, is not up to date so that means that litigation will grow hopefully if you think that you know that conciliation officers or mediation officers or labor commissioners were adequate in number the you will not see that much rise in litigation so the since the system is not updated you will see that there will be a good rise in litigation right so the, uh, that reminds me the only time i heard the work lo uh, word lockdown was uh, strikes and lockdowns while i was reading uh, the labor laws in my law school sure. uh, now the lockdown has come to reality and everywhere it's a lockdown so uh, yeah. not to waste time in, life, in our lifetime we are seeing this for the only time where the whole country is shut down and we are sitting in our respective offices and houses and doing right. everything from work from home work from home is also an interesting concept it was it is never imbibed in the books of law there is no concept in the in as a work from home in the four corners of law but this is something which needs to be understood by the government and has to be looked into for the in relation to the future prospect right so uh, the second question i have is like uh, what happens to these people uh, there are people who are working in the emergency services right and uh, providing all these emergency services to people like for example i recently came across a news where uh, the nurses of a hospital got exposed to corona virus and uh, then they were treated and all those things so what happens in these conditions like what happens to uh, the, the workplace of these these people the nurses See, and workplace is a workplace workplace is um, the the definition of workplace is very extensive it is not inclusive uh, mm. when i say that it is not inclusive it means even if i am supposedly uh, you are traveling to my office in jaipur on behalf of uh, law seco for some task and uh, Uh, you know you come across some incident that is also your workplace so workplace is a very uh, very open uh, open definition so anything and everything which you are doing to uh, to justify your job opportunities is your workplace nonetheless these the essential services which have been essential services paramedics doctors whatever the, whoever are on there in streets protecting us i they are not most of them are not laborers they do not fall within the purview of laborers uh, government uh, nurses and they are they are within the purview they are not within the purview of laborers they are uh, they are much are too great higher than nurses but yes certain uh, class of people like the people who sanitize us they are in the purview of laborers so most of the government statements have announced packages for their safe uh, for their safeguards there have been instances uh, of deaths of doctors as well as paramedics in the country so i think uh, the maximum uh, compensation is something around 1 cr per person and 50 lakhs is the uh, is the uh, is the starting which the state governments and the central governments so it depends on state, state yes but most so of them will all will be compensated 
yes they have to be adequately compensated even the uh, even the disaster management act gives provision gives power right. to the state government to provide them with adequate adequate uh, benefits for um, for their services which they are doing it in such a bad times mm -hmm. okay and uh, what happens to the pay cuts what, what, what is the uh, i mean exact provisions related to pay cuts that has been happening because uh, i also come across a lot of people uh, who tell me that they have not received their salaries or uh, many of them have received like a 40% 60% pay cut w what are the exact provisions to this in the labor law see for that you need to look into your employment contract Mm -hmm. supposedly if the employment contract gives the power to the employer looking to certain conditions or uh, times to you know uh, take appropriate measures to reduce your pay he has all the power to do that but certainly it cannot be stopped it may be delayed it may be uh, you know it may be kept on a kept on a hang for say another one month two months three months but it cannot be it cannot be deducted it has to be given if they don't uh, if they don't pay you your salaries or your wages there is a specific provisions of under the labor laws under the payment of wages act that they can be penalized up to 10 times so supposedly there are there is a 30000 pay cut and they are not paying you for another 3 months they can be levied upon a 3 lakhs penalty which will be payable to you and very interesting part is that more in in such provisions appeal is very stringent you need to pay 75% of the amount to the person before filing an appeal so basically the appeal rate provision is a redundant provision which is very less opted for but if, but otherwise what um, uh, uh, most of the industry standards um, they are practicing is that they are paying around 50 to 60% of the salaries and wages and will be adjusting even the governments government are also deducting 30 to 60% of the pension and uh, salaries of their workers and they'll be paying the later part of the of the year supposedly in a month or two when the uh, collection of taxes and collection government revenue increases but certainly one thing is very sure one thing is very straight forward that no industry can deduct pay wages without giving any justification without implying any financial hazards because deducting a uh, deducting a salary or deducting a wages is a financial censure with where there is a proceeding which has to be done by the department or the company or the work or the industry so okay. they cannot deduct your salary they can delay it but they cannot deduct it okay and uh, uh, in the work from home scenarios uh, this this particular like question i have uh, i mean i want to take it up with an example let's mm. suppose uh, i'm working from home and uh, suddenly uh, the ceiling fan it falls on my head can i be compensated for the same yes you can you can be. and what are the you certain uh, what are the provisions re in regards to that you for that you need to look into the federal accidents act and uh, claims act see what happens is that uh, the prerogative of that person is that he should be working for the company it may be at the company's workplace or it may be at the place of you know where the employer has decided you or made you to work it can be on the streets also so if you if you remember there have been certain case laws and certain uh, certain incidents where a people have been working on road and they have met with an accident and there has been a temporary or a permanent disability they will be compensated by the companies or the respective departments because that is the workplace only so the workplace is a very vague concept it was first defined in the sexual uh, sexual prevention from the sexual harassment act 2013 before that only your job perspective only your job profile supposedly you are working uh, in a in the middle of a jungle and it was it is your it is your job duties to do that and supposedly a tree you know you meet an accident a road accident or a or a accident arising out of some natural calamity so that will be within the four corners of uh, uh, of the comp of the of your job duties and you will be compensated for that it it uh, there has been a i have even there were queries from employers to me also that what will be the effect of work from home work from home doesn't mean that the person is not on the job 
he is doing it on the job because of uh, he is doing the job from his house because of the certain guidelines issued during the calamity so uh, at home also he is working at home also he is performing his job duties so that will be counted in his job duties on but how can this be uh, like uh, i mean fix that uh, the person was working only at his house when all of this incident has happened there are no cameras or recordings or anything of that sort to prove that no right? no no see cameras and recordings you know it can be done but it is again in violation of your right to privacy so right. you cannot record your employee at home that what is he doing so right. that will be a breach of the privacy but it will it is a case to case basis it is a case to case discretion supposedly uh, you know i am i am talking to you and uh, supposedly the, i meet with an accident so my uh, talking to you is not my job duty so that won't be considered in my you know job prerogatives or job discretions and that won't be classified for compensation but yes as part of my job duties you know if my, my i was working for some firm and the firm has asked me to uh, you know go go on a webinar and uh, discuss the issues of labor laws with people at large and during that if i you know meet with an accident yes mm-hmm. it will be the will be the within the prerogative of uh, that of your job duties and you will have to be compensated so it is a case to case basis there are no stringent or strict principles you know there is no check box that you know you check these five points and you are eligible for uh, for any compensation it is a case to case basis discretion uh, case to case basis um, thing depend on case to be taken. yeah okay so that there has uh, been like the companies have been implementing software and all those things where uh, they take screenshots uh, every 5 minutes 10 minutes from your uh, uh, i mean computers and uh, the laptops that they have given you mm-hmm. and uh, how much of that uh, actually uh, breaches your privacy and uh, how much of that is actually allowed as per the law see the uh, you know the proof of work is no ground in the law Okay, mm-hmm. that is that is only to the satisfaction of your superior authority. Nothing less, nothing more. The okay. the law never prescribes you that in order to show that you are working from home, you need to send screenshots to your employer. Mm-hmm. So, frankly speaking, but, the employers, uh, but specific employers have uh, actually yes. there uh, are certain softwares. Also, the software. okay. There are certain softwares mm-hmm. also in the market. which is installed in your computer which tracks your time uh, tracks your you know uh, uh, the hours over which you have spent working for the company or for for your industry or for your employer but mm-hmm. uh, there is the, the un- under the law there is no discretion so, and it will be obvious that the law the, the most of the industrial laws were framed prior to independence or next 20 years after independence so obviously they could not have you know put a such an inclusive definition to uh, to the you know working hours and all the law only prescribes about working hours and that too there is a cap of maximum working hours it says 9 hours a day 48 hours a week that will be all it doesn't prescribe that you know that if you work for one hour the industry will not be liable to uh, pay a pay or not pay you know pay deduct uh, do certain deductions or not pay not allow you to pay something so these are all industry practices the law doesn't provide you to uh, deduct any amount or deduct the wages you have to the uh, people have large have to be you know uh, be aware that the in, uh, the labor laws is a social welfare legislation it is not a commercial legislation so uh, if it is a social welfare legislation the benefits of people at large involved in that industry has to be looked into right uh, so what if the company doesn't have uh, let's say for example uh, there is a company uh, based out of let's say nigeria and uh, they have a subsidiary company here in india okay mm-hmm. and that's a very small company uh, like even the subsidiary has like less than 50 employees mm-hmm. and now because of the covid situation that has happened uh the company is struggling for its financial reserves it has no uh, really financial reserves and the businesses have also gone down mm-hmm. how much of that can be like uh, an excuse under the labor law like uh, let's say these people uh, don't have sufficient amount of money or reserves to pay out the salaries for people 
as well as they are uh, facing challenges in their original i mean nigeria also for their operations so what can be the recourse on the uh, side of these employers that are there see the employer again for that uh, every person who's um, um, are working under some management must have assigned must have signed a uh, employment contract must mm-hmm. have executed the terms of his employment he has to look into the terms of employment if the terms of employment states that you know that there are deductions can be made or you know a pay cut can be done or uh, your salaries may can be delayed only then uh, those salaries can be can be um, can be stopped or can be delayed otherwise the labor law is totally silent on that the law doesn't pro- uh, prescribes any any safeguard to the employer to not pay mm-hmm. you know there is no there is no uh, conditions prerequisite which says that in these x y z or a b c conditions the employer can delay the salaries or they cannot you know refuse the salaries there is no such uh, no such deductions or there is no such prerequisite conditions for that every employer is bound to pay his obligations towards towards the employee so you have to that is why do you create a additional financial funds or you safeguard it but given to the situation that uh, you know there is a, there is the company is incapable of paying every industry have trade unions every industry or every every um, industry has their own unions group of em- group of employees forming unions the unions have their uh, have their uh, management in the sense that the union is headed by a union leader there are secretaries also there will be a treasurer also those people uh, the trade unions act 1926 uh, those people have to be you know taken into confidence that you know that the labor should not agitate regarding this issue and as and when the company's financial stability increases the uh, salaries will be paid out mm. right and what happens like uh, specific can you uh, like specifically tell me about like uh, prevention of sexual harassment like its applicability i mean now that the people are working from home how does the prevention of sexual harassment act work see the the, pre- the prevention of sexual harassment act 2009 uh, 2013 uh, had its um, uh, had its um, uh, birth from the vishaka judgment 1997's uh, vishaka judgment which had given certain guidelines on the prevention of uh, sexual harassment at workplace now if you the section 2 i think uh, o or k is the provision which defines workplace workplace again workplace very specifically is defined that uh, when a person when a woman is traveling or say, uh, traveling or working in regards to her work uh, duties from any other place uh, specified by the employer that also will be workplace so supposedly if i am working from home and there are you know you are working from home and there are 10 uh, people on a conference and there is some uh, you know uh, unacceptable remarks or unacceptable um, unacceptable behavior which has been shown on shown on by any colleague so the prevention of uh, sexual harassment at workplace act comes into picture it will be equally applicable as if you were working at your workplace or as if you were sitting in the employer's office and working so it doesn't differentiate and very importantly the act has a very very um, um, very open uh, open ex- o- open or uh, you know uh, that it, it it is very uh, exclusive or not inclusive in nature for the reason that the employer it doesn't it says that the person of work, women working whether employed or not so if you if a woman is there in your office she might not be working directly under you or she might not be working directly with the company but if she is there at the workplace and if there is some uh, misbehavior which uh, which amounts to the violation of provisions of the act so the prevention of sexual harassment act comes into picture it is not that uh, you know the you can shy away from the from your uh, responsibility saying that that uh, that women is working from home and therefore the provisions of the act is not applicable even the dwelling place or the houses are part of the act it very clearly differentiates between workplace and dwelling place and houses so by the by virtue of that all all these uh, 
all even the guest houses they will be part of workplace only and the if there is any you know shortcomings in a behavior of a colleague or a or colleague or a, any person who is working with uh, with that women it will be equally liable under the act even if that woman is working from home okay and uh, the last question that i have uh, from my side before we take up the question from all the viewers there have been a long list of questions that are there yes, yes, uh, so the last question that i have uh, is that uh, what happens to the attendance policy that are there i mean uh, what happens to the work of hr managers in that case because uh, a lot of places like uh, let's say for an example a lpo right they have biometric systems and all of that and uh, people generally have to uh, put their fingerprints to get inside the project rooms and work there and then come out so they have like a strict attendance policy that they follow uh, what happens to uh, these uh, like uh, organizations that uh, work on the strict attendance policies what what happens to these attendance If policies remember that there was an advisory issued by the central government which mm -hmm. says that uh, that biometrics attendance should be avoided as far as possible mm -hmm. so the but that's again an advisory right yes it is an advisory and in certain states there have been specific directions uh, mm -hmm. issued in this regard very specifically stating that biometrics should be avoided see initially if you uh, if you look into the history of industrial disputes act or labor laws there was no concept of biometrics there was only the concept or even today the provisions uh, exist that the register have to be maintained register of attendance has to be maintained now mm -hmm. since uh, somebody is needed to maintain a register or somebody is needed to operate a biometric most of the industries are shut down everybody mm -hmm. is advised and directed by the management to work from home who will do that nobody is there to you know ensure your biometrics are taken into record on day to day basis nobody is there to see whether there is uh, you know there is uh, there is a register which is properly maintained and most of the and most of the people i have spoken to in recent times have said that uh, the uh, the attendance are being marked through whatsapp and the daily work performance or daily uh, average work uh, work productivity is also seen so by that um, uh, your attendance is being marked as normal as you were working in the establishment of the employer so there is no particular uh, particular guidelines which says in the current though there are no particular guidelines which says that you know there will be no uh, the, the, the uh, biometrics or the register have to be very strictly maintained these are these these are you know procedural aspect which has to be relaxed given the uh, given the uh, the current times of uh, the current tough times which we are facing these are not the stringent penal provisions which has to be followed in its word you can read between the lines that is what i would suggest right so uh, let's just begin with the uh, list of questions that people have come across and i will read it out to the you and then probably you can be you can answer all of them right sure. sir discuss about the new four codes and its pros and cons the question Excuse is from me. prabhakar yes uh, hi prabhakar uh, these four codes are scrapping the 44 to 51 old laws which have been persistent from 1923 to 2013 the last one being the prevention of uh, sexual harassment act 2013 so they are all uh, ex i think uh, except prevention of sexual harassment at workplace or might be that also be included because the all the wages code have been referred to the standing committee of the parliament they are scrapping it into the total four parts they are bringing i think uh, i'll name i have shortlisted the name also uh, they are bringing four new wages uh, four new codes first being the code on wages 2019 second being the labor uh, code on industrial relations third being the labor code on social security and welfare and fourth being the occupational health and working conditions 2019 by a code on wages 2019 they'll be scrapping up minimum wages act payment of wages act payment of bonus act equal remuneration act by labor code on industrial relations they'll be scrapping up trade unions act industrial employment standing orders act industrial dispute act uh, by uh, labor code on social security and welfare they'll be scrapping up uh, nine laws of which major is 
employee compensation act 1923 maternity benefits act payment of gratuity act unorganized worker social security act 2008 uh, fourth being the occupational safety and working conditions code 2019 by which the, the central government is proposing to scrap up 13 major laws uh, 13 laws of uh, labor law of which four main is factories act plantation labor act mines act Uh, building and construction workers act so by they are basically you know uh, making it uh, a more uh, practical the government is making it to a more practical aspect since uh, now there were so many acts every had every uh, statutory act has its own adjudicating bodies so by by combining these all the legislations into four legislation the government is doing uh, granting ease of business to the industries and it is, i i would very definitely suggest that uh, most of the registrations have to be redone so there is a lot of future in labor laws uh, specifically when these new uh, new legislations will be promulgated and brought into the picture right next question is from devyesh and uh, he says what is the process to determine the fairness of a domestic inquiry see the domestic inquiry uh, you have to first see that what is the basis of domestic inquiry domestic inquiry gets its genesis from the standing orders of industrial uh, dispute standing orders act uh, every every person who is working under under some industry or under some employer cannot be kicked out in the middle of the night to you know uh, to face the wrath of the time an employer has to be justified in its act and employer has to justify its justify his acts so the domestic inquiries basic principle is principle of natural justice that the employee and the employer both are heard by a person uh, by a by a person who is neutral or who is you know not biased uh, by the uh, by the employer and employee may probably a third party or probably a third person or probably certain person who specializes in that to determine who is actually wrong so the only principle which is followed in a domestic inquiry is principles of natural justice great uh, please the next question is from please also can you discuss about the startup jobs and salaries we have already answered this question i think with the question i put across to you so I have a question around notice period and withdrawal of resignation by an employer. I I just read it out for you, Nitish, uh, because I've been taking it from the beginning. Sure. So uh, the next question is from Manjunath. Uh, in in construction industry, can you throw some light on the labor laws? Since we see a lot of non-compliance and harassment of labor law of labor officers. So in uh, the, the there have been there for industries and for construction. The, the except maharashtra the general laws labor laws are applicable in maharashtra there is a specific act to provides safety for the construction workers so uh, if there is if there is any violation of say now working hours minimum wages uh, working conditions uh, working conditions basic essential conditions you can always complain before the uh, assistant labor commissioner who will first try to conciliate between the employer and the employee and if the conciliation proceedings fail they can always be you know they can uh, always refer the dispute under section 10 of industrial dispute act to the concerned labor courts or assistant labor courts for adjudication under a time bound manner great uh the next question is from anil kumar mishra how to start practicing t2 and t3 cities in labor how to make the clients and the our connections with us as a new lawyer like how do you make connections as a new lawyer and how do you start your practice in t2 3 t3 c see uh, every, every that's more relatable to you i believe nitish yes i since i being in the tier 2 it definitely is related to, i can answer that well uh, see every city or every state has its employer associations or employee associations you can always join these employer associations employer associations is basically an association of all the industries across the state or across the city who uh, who gather at one place they are uh, they are they are basically two parts of it industrial members and professional members so you can always become a professional member 
give your opinion to it they conduct uh, so they conduct a um, um, lot of um, um, webinars they conduct a lot of uh, uh, speeches and um, on an online exercise for that you can always join in and give your views and that is how you normally make an industrial contact great so the next question is uh, how does the mha notification <coughs> sorry on 29th stand with with the advisors would uh, would you be distinguishing it among the uh, among them the advisories mha notification, notification on 29th i am not, sure. not sure which notification are you talking about you can elaborate and send me a mail so that i can see and revert back to you i do i am not aware which notifications you are particularly speaking about. maybe we can put in your email id and pe- uh, like for people to reach out to you for their sure, personal sure. question if the same are not being answered here yes yes sure no problem okay so uh, the next question is from arun uh, one more issue in construction industries compliance under the bocw act uh, yes. with specific reference to the considering supply and services to be included which arriving at the cost of construction the issue is still in the supreme court and no finality has been reached in this aspect what are your suggestion we can wait for the orders of the supreme court that is the best suggestion i can give you right <laughs> so that's typically a lawyer doesn't answer before the supreme court <laughs> actually i'm thinking i am out by the judgment of the higher courts or supreme court let us wait for them to adjudicate and then we can interpret it in either ways right sir one of the top businesses company which is only anil kumar mishra uh, has this question uh, one of the top businesses company which has only paid only 40% salary to the employees and this case how to be support to legal assistance to the client client in both side employer and employee so i think we sufficiently answered this I'm question sure in this detail in the discussion in the beginning right well, then the question is from arun he says what is your esteemed opinion in relation to practice in labor laws when the manufacturing activities in india is no more and only service industry is booming so that means uh, there will be a boom as soon as the lockdown is open because a lot of labor i believe that uh, the first thing uh, the labor the management or the industry will be doing is uh, chucking out the dead wood so get hold of those dead wood and you will be booming in your litigation right for the vesh we have already answered this question of domestic inquiry yes and uh, then there is aman pardiwala and this question is what is the effect of force major on service industry are they bound to pay say for example small firms or offices yes every employer is bound to pay uh, the see as as i told you in my discussion uh, every person uh, every person has an individual contract with the company so the terms of the contract has to be strictly uh, construed it's a it's a legal document which which holds a complete sanctity in the eyes of law so uh, given this scenario you have to check with your employee with with the, with the contract but nonetheless uh, wages are or the salaries are the essentials of the job and you have to be paid there is no you know second thought that uh, he can deduct your salaries or cannot refuse to pay you your salaries for that there are there have been pro- there are provisions under the law under the payment of wages act under the industrial dispute act to raise the grievance before the concerned commission labor commissioners and labor court and you will be awarded you can get a compensation raising from two times to 10 times as a penalty upon the industry for not paying his dues right then the next question is from swati ratna and she says government is instructed to pay wages to all worker how about peace rate workers uh, how about peace rate workers word i don't know exactly what that means but nonetheless the government has issued an advisory and uh, there are certain states which have issued specific directions like particularly in rajasthan i think two days ago they have issued a specific order uh, directing the uh, like they have issued uh, particularly to the schools educational institutes that the salary of no teachers will be will be stopped 
So in that condition, it's a very specific directions. Uh, every state has passed its own directions. You have to check with your state uh, state uh, notifications. If there is a uh, if there is a very specific direction that the pay cuts cannot be made, that means pay cuts cannot be made. It is not to the discretion of the company to make it. You have all the legal remedies within uh, available in the law to you know file a case against the employer for deducting wrongfully deducting your salary. Great. Next question is from uh, Lockdown Me. That's a very unique name. Uh, how should the software companies prevent labor litigation against themselves for mass layoffs? See, uh, fifty percent of the states uh, do not have a software company. They do not consider software companies people as a labor. They are uh, well-educated professionals. They are not in the category of labor. Particularly, specifically, if I talk about uh, northern India. I don't think uh, I am not sure of uh, Haryana. Most of the state do not put in uh, IT professionals or software companies employees as labors. Yes, there are certain states in down south which have placed. I think uh, Tamil Nadu or Karnataka which have placed software company employees as labor. So the provisions uh, for resolution under the Industrial Dispute Act. And uh, under the Minimum Wages Act and under, under the Payment of Wages Act is applicable to you. And uh, recourse under different authorities, payment of wages prescribed by particular authority for adjudication. While the industrial disputes provide industrial tribunals and labor courts for adjudication, so that particularly op that particular option is always open to you to access. Right. So uh, I believe it's already 5 p.m. now. We we can uh, like extend it to 10-15 minutes more and try to answer as many questions as you sure, can. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. So uh, the next question is from Arun. What is your opinion <coughs> on the labor inspector commencing frivolous criminal proceedings against the directors for non-compliance of the provision, sometimes with or without vested interest? Because commencing the criminal proceedings is in, in the hands of the lowest authority, but withdrawal is not in their hands. Yes, the, this is this is a particular lacuna which exists that you know uh, uh, on on finding some non-compliance, they can institute a criminal proceedings as well as some financial measures can be adopted in an industry or in an, or against an employer. So, in, I suggest that. Uh, if there is a criminal uh, a criminal aspect or criminal litigation against initiated against you, opt uh, for filing a quash petition or quash petition quash petition or um, uh, you know um, for um, for appropriate remedy before the high court because there is no remedy other than mm -hmm. that. Labor department do not have the authority, do not have the power in the books to withdraw the criminal proceedings already initiated. It is for the prosecution department and for the high court. To uh, uh, demolish the case as and when uh, on the on fact to fact on case to case basis. Okay. Uh, the next question is from P. A. <coughs> he says, "What is the success rate for clients uh, bracket employee when they file a case against a company who did not pay salaries and laid off?" See, there is no success parameters. There is, as I told in my discussion, there is no checkbox. You know, you check those five points and you win a case or you win a situation. It will be a case to case basis. But yes, since the labor law is a social welfare legislation, uh, I very sincerely believe that uh, the employees uh, hold a major strength in these laws. Right. The next question is from DJ Legal, uh, but uh, I don't think we have sufficient time to answer that. Uh, but I'll still read out the question. Can you please explain the concept of daily wages and monthly wages calculated on 26-day basis under Minimum Wages Act? Can you like? Uh, it's a big concept. It will take. It will require another complete session. It cannot be answered in ten minutes. Right. So uh, I move to the next question. That's from Jail Oda, and. Uh, what about the provident fund claims and uh, pension disbursement? How does EPFO ensure that? See, pensions, the government, I believe that government has uh, looking to the financial conditions of the state. Every, every, uh, particularly in Rajasthan, I think there have been 30% cut in the pension. But that is not a cut. That is only that uh, the pension has been stopped and will be paid in future. So I don't think that is an issue. 
yes if the epf uh, epf provident funds are not being deposited by the companies you always have the recourse under the act to raise uh, before the concerned commissioners and the authorities to uh, very specifically uh, you know raise a raise a grievance that provident fund is not being deposited by the uh, by the employer and it is not a liability it is no it is no charity which they are doing it is a bounden duty of the employer to do that so the, the things will be taken to task okay the next question is from shweta uh, retired central government employees are getting pension after 30% pay cut without any direct information to them it's not a pay cut it's only a delay in payment the next is what if there is a justification uh, reasonable but still affecting my salary or wages do i have my right to claim no uh, i'm sorry i missed that question can you read it again what if there is a justification reasonable but still affecting my salary or wages do i have do i do i waive my right to claim no you do not waive your right to claim but as you you yourself are answering the question that there is a reasonable justification to that then you know uh, you can if there is a reasonable justification you cannot argue against it so this is one question even i wanted to ask but uh, bhargavi has asked here <coughs> what is the legality of amending employment agreements in the current scenario see employment agreements is a two way it's a two way process when i say it's a two way process there's a, uh, an employment agreement which has already been entered into if the con- conditions have to be amended then the consent of both the parties have to be accorded it is not that the employer can amend the contract on on his whole in its own discretion uh, once the contract has been entered into and the employee is working if there is any changes which are required it has to be done with consent of both the parties it is as good as a pure civil law so then there are uh, next questions uh, is uh, from nirmit uh, what happens in a situation wherein there is there is no employment contract and due to such lockdown situation there is a pay cut or layoff what is the remedy available to them first you have to determine whether you are a labor under the labor law or not if not you have the remedy of filing a suit for damages against the against the uh, against the employer supposedly if you are within the category, within the notified uh, uh, labor Uh, definition then you can raise a raise the grievance before the payment of wages authority and supposedly even if then it is not paid there is a, under section 31 of the industrial disputes act uh, you can definitely go for a criminal prosecution of the directors of the company next question is from anil kumar mishra he says during these days retail companies have forced to their employees to come to office or warehouse in this situation if the employees being affected with covid 19 can they get same benefits like government employees first do not go call 100 100 that is the uh, that is the foremost requirement no employer can force you to come down in the establishment and you know um, uh, ask you to uh, ask you to risk your life for working nonetheless uh, as i said in my discussion whether you work at your 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 home or you work at the establishment of the employer you if you are performing your job duties uh, you will be accorded all the benefits uh, which is which if uh, for for unfor reason any there is any shortcomings then the employer is liable to pay okay uh, accidents or uh, other provisions next question is from devasis sinha he says can the faculty members of the university file a litigation for the pay cut under the payment of wages act teachers are not laborers and therefore they are not not notified under the payment of wages act they have uh, their education tribunal for such recourse uh then the next question is from nikita he say, uh, she says uh, you said that the employees whose pays have been cut during this time are entitled to be paid at some point can you please tell us how much time is the employer given to act on this and where can we find literature on this if you want to read more on it see uh, the there the, the time this this is not provided under the act that uh, they can pay it within a period of 2 months or 3 months the time has to be reasonable if after 2 months 3 months or 6 months you believe that you, they are not going uh, they are not going to pay you 
file a case against the employer against uh, in an appropriate hierarchy of law though there is no uh, under the statutory provisions it doesn't define reasonable time so uh, the next question is from divyesh so when a private company retrenches its employees do they need to send any legal notice or pay the complete wages no they can if they if a private company is removing some of its employees they, under the employment contract generally the provisions are pay them one month or two month salary and uh, an advance uh, and give them a termination letter or a on the or a, or a removal letter so they can always be retrenched by giving them one month or two month salary okay uh, the next question is from bharat maheshwari uh, he says i have a question around notice period and withdrawal of resignation by an employee uh, kindly unmute me to ask i am really sorry i can't do that but uh, i definitely want nitish to answer this for you you can mail me a question any time so the government while issuing advisories have invoked epidemic diseases okay let's just finish this for the time being and uh, in the end i request all of you to please rate this uh, webinar on a scale of 0 to 10 where 0 being the least satisfactory and 10 being the highest satisfaction i am just putting the email id nitish can you please put down your email id here i'll do that so uh, again like in the end uh, we at law seco have a course around uh, labor and industrial laws where we deal with uh, real life situations as exercises and every week we give you two exercises to deal with it's a six months course in case anyone is interested like in this time of covid they want to develop up their practices around labor and industrial laws feel free to get in touch with me i put down my number my email id and uh, whatever is required i'll be more than happy to help you all so let's just call it off and thank you everyone for being here and thank rating us you know, for a good rating of over 8 thank you and see you again thank bye. you bye thank, thank you, you. thank bye. you bye bye